Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sidetrack here, bringing you another Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at Thermal Expansion's uh, newish block, uh, the Item Duct. Now the Item Duct is simply a, an item transport system, um, and it works very, very well. I, I love this little thing. But before we talk about the Item Duct, I want to talk about something else that you're very familiar with, or at least should be, um, the Buildcraft transportation system. Now with Buildcraft you know you have to have a uh, wooden transport pipe and you either have to put an autarkic gate on it or use some kind of an engine and a redstone signal and upon doing that you will start to suck items out of any inventory and they will move along down the line. Now obviously Buildcraft is much more complicated than I'm going to make it right now but I want to illustrate one point. So these will move down the line just because we applied a redstone signal. Um, and they will move down one at a time. Once they get to the end of the line, they don't know what to do, so they fall out of the pipe. And you can see them making a nice mess on my floor. Um, bear that in mind, because what we're going to talk about now is the item duct from Thermal Expansion. So the item duct from Thermal Expansion comes in several flavors. Um, they all do exactly the same thing. Functionally, they're exactly the same. The only difference is the appearance creaky chair, and how quickly they transfer items. So the basic, basic item duct is the item duct opaque. Um, it will, you know, just only difference is you cannot see items. So it uses tin and a lead, gets you six item ducts. Not the easiest, you know, compared to our buildcraft system. So it requires a little more materials. And the item duct opaque sounds exactly what it is. It's a, an opaque item duct. You cannot see through it. That's what opaque means. Um, the regular item duct that I'm going to be using today requires tin and this hardened glass. Hardened glass is simply pulverized obsidian and lead in an induction smelter. Not the earliest game item, but certainly manageable, especially with a lot of the thermal expansion blocks, um, like the igneous extruder. So, yes, how do these work? Well... If I were to go and break this for the moment, um, how you extract items from a chest, you will see that there is an output pipe. And you see it's kind of got this red arrow that is saying that items will get exported from the pipe. Compare that to the blue arrow on this side. If you take your crescent hammer and you right click, you can cycle through three different options. So you've got do not connect, which won't connect. You've got input and you've got export. Ex port. Now, how this works is in order to export items, you need to apply a redstone signal. And it will, on default, try to extract them a stack at a time. And it extracts them reasonably quickly, but not super fast. Now, you'll notice that nothing is transferring through this pipe. This is one of the big differences to Buildcraft. So, I suppose there are two big differences. One of them is that you don't need an engine or a gate or anything else to extract items, you just need to apply redstone signal. The other biggest difference is that these are intelligent pipes. It looks down the line and it says, is there anything that will accept sand or item ducts? And since the answer is no, it's just an empty pipe, nothing will get extracted. Now, I'm going to go ahead and drop an induction smelter down. Now, an induction smelter will not use pipes, but it can use sand. So you can watch and see what happens. The sand works its way down. Pretty cool. So this allows for some really great systems. And uh, I'm actually going to be doing a video in a little bit that will show you one of these um, for ways to sort your items. So since item ducts cannot go to the induction smelter, they do not get sent. They stay in the chest. Very, very cool. So let's go ahead and break this. And if we were to stick a regular crystal chest here, Crystal chest will take everything, it's just like a wooden chest with a big inventory. And now the item ducts will continue on their way. So very cool. If we were to accidentally go through and say, oh wait, I want this to not input into this chest, these get stuffed back in here, and if we applied a redstone signal, well I guess they can't come back over this way. Um, they will work their way backwards. Um, so they will not spill on the floor, which is good to know. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are these impulse item ducts. Now, I have them over here. The impulse item duct works simply 
exactly the same way as the regular item duct, it just works faster. So you have to take a regular item duct, stick it in a fluid transposer, and apply a little bit of glowstone. Now this will work with either your opaque or your regular item ducts. Um, and they work exactly the same, just a lot faster. So look at how much faster those things zip through those pipes. Pretty cool. Alright, so basics of item ducts. They extract with redstone signal. They only send to inventories that can extract uh, what are they called? Impulse item ducts will extract things faster and move them faster. Very cool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is well, I need to get myself a lever. Well, I have redstone si pull, um, torch. That'll work. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is routing of items. Now, like I told you before, these are intelligent pipes. So they're going to look down the line and they're going to say, where is the closest place I can put these items? In this case, this chest is closer. So if we go ahead and throw some things in here, apply a redstone signal, you can see that the little arrow lights up, all of the items will move into the closer chest. Pretty cool. Grab these out. Next, what you can do if, say, you were like, well, I don't want them to go into a closer inventory. I would rather them fill up that chest first and then overflow into this chest. Well, there is a solution. You take your crescent hammer, you right click on the pipe, and you will get this little red stripe. This is dense mode, and it says that this pipe is now a thousand units longer than it was before. So if we come over here, we throw a bunch of things in here and apply a red set signal, these things will get exported and they will all go to the farther chest because this one is set to dense mode. Pretty cool. So the other thing you can do is instead of dense mode, you can also do um, vacuum mode. And that means that this pipe here is a thousand units shorter than it was before. So if we go ahead and stick a bunch of stuff in here, the exact same thing happens. Instead of getting blocked from this way, they get sucked down this tube and all of your items will end up in this chest. Pretty cool. Now, there is one more mode. And before I show it to you, I have to turn that off. When you have an inventory that is, ex or a, a pipe that is exporting from another inventory, you will get a third option. So you have red, green, and orange. You'll notice if there's no pipe here, just red and green. So orange is a round robin mode. And round robin mode works fairly simply. If we go ahead and apply redstone signal, you'll see that they get split evenly. One will go to here, one will go down there, one will go here, one will go down there, and so forth. Um, so this is essentially kind of what Buildcraft does if you have a T-junction. Um, Buildcraft will, you know, each item has a 50-50 shot of going one way or the other way. Um, it's not exactly 50-50. This is 50-50, which is pretty cool. Alright, so we talked about these things. Now the last thing I want to talk to you about is this thing we call a pneumatic servo. Now the pneumatic servo is really, really useful. Um, because it allows for a couple things. You install the pneumatic servo on your pipe, so you right click. And really the only places you want to put it are places where there's an export or an input from an inventory. But you can place it anywhere. And you can see that down on the bottom it says a pneumatic servo has been installed. Well, it doesn't do me any good to install it in the middle. So, I mean, it really doesn't do anything. So don't do it anywhere that there's no input or output. But a place where there's an input or an output, you can right click on that output or the input, and you now have a filter. So the pneumatic servo is very simple to make, much easier than, say, a diamond transport pipe. It's just some lead, redstone, and glass. And these are, I have a bunch of extra <laughs> mods on here right now. It's just any type of glass works. Um, and you get this interface. So you can set all kinds of interesting things. You can change the, sac the stack size, so I only, and you can hold down shift to change it a lot. I only want to export items one at a time. Default is ex export the whole stack. Um, I have a blacklist. I do not want to export sand or blocks of redstone. Um, you can use metadata 
or use the OR dictionary. Um, metadata, unless you know what I'm talking about, ignore what I'm saying. Um, same with NBT. Um, and then the OR dictionary means that, in theory, it should use any type of OR, you know, if you have multiple mods installed um, and multiple things give you copper. It should, you know, recognize everything as copper. Generally works. Um, as long as the mod has been written correctly. <laughs> uh, so, I do not want it to export sand or blocks of redstone because they are on my blacklist. So if I put blocks of redstone and sand in there, apply a redstone signal, they will not get exported, which is very cool. On the contrary, I could say I only want it... Okay, so it's now exporting crystal chests one at a time. Now, if I said I only want it to export sand and blocks of redstone, the crystal chests are no longer being exported, but the redstone is, and if I switch that around, then the sand would be. So pretty cool. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this is one of my favorites, is it actually has its red own redstone control. So if you do not want to actually put a redstone torch next to your pipe, or you don't want to, you know, put a lever or what, what have you, you can change the redstone control to the default is high, it needs a redstone signal, down to low, which means it does not need a redstone signal. And now you'll see that there is no redstone torch, and there is no redstone signal, but it is exporting items. And it's still set to round robin, so it's splitting them evenly between these two chests. So that's pretty cool. Um, hopefully, this was very useful to you. Um, if I missed something, please let me know, and I will try and cover it in the comments, or maybe make a, an addendum to the video, I don't know. Until next time, this is Sidetrack signing off. Have a great day, folks.